finally going to do my studio tour. I've been promising you this since about March, and so it is coming in this episode. And I was also going to do this a bit vlog style. I was going to do a day in the life of a colour, well, not a colourist, a day in the life of me. Um, but I've not been having very typical days recently. In fact, for the last week, I've been pretty much here with two broken ribs. So I fell down the stairs here. And so I can't really do a day in the life of me because I'm not really having normal days at the minute. In the meanwhile, let's go down to the studio. I'm going to grab my dog. Baxter, come on. Baxter. Come on, bro. Come on. Let's go. That's Baxter the dog. Say hello. Right. Okay, so my studio's just behind me here. We're right in central Brighton. The pavilion's just in front of me. The beach is about five minutes away. Let's go into the studio and have a good old geek out. So we finished filming completely in the studio and then uh, DHL have just arrived with a package. So I'm gonna do my first ever unboxing. So let's do a quick go like this. A new addition to the suite we have. This is the main grading suite. So obviously I'm gonna give you my full studio tour as promised since March, I think. So we're finally here in September. <laughs> it's actually September the 1st and it's today, I think. So I'm gonna show you everything, but at the minute, obviously we're in the dark. So this is one of three suites that we've got here. So downstairs I've got an edit suite and a production office kind of graphic suite. And this is the main color grading suite. So obviously this is how we work, so it's in the dark, but I don't wanna do this whole studio tour in the dark. So I'm just gonna show you a few things now, get that done, then we can put some lights on. I've got the monitors here. These are probably flickering a bit on the screen, so I wanna be able to, I'm gonna switch these off soon, but just so you can see what it's like in the proper conditions, this is how we work. So the, each of these monitors, this is the client monitor, this is my hero grading monitor, has on the back uh, media bias lighting strips. So these are actually, the company's actually called Media Bias, and they are D65, white point lighting, so I get a really perfect color critical conditions to work in, okay? So you can't just have any old light on here. They have a very high CRI value, so they, they're really accurate, basically. So this is great for grading. Now the problem is on camera, they often flicker, so I'm gonna switch them off soon. This is the Panasonic GZ2000. This is the one that's endorsed by Stefan Sonnenfeld at Company 3. Really great monitor, does 4K, uh, does kind of HDR emulation, but I don't really use it for HDR. But this is for my client monitor, this is the 55 inch. And then down here, my hero monitor is a Flanders Scientific DM250 OLED. I love this monitor, so I basically sit here in front of that. Client sits at the back, you'll see all this in a moment, and they can look at that, and everyone's happy. Okay, so I'm gonna put us back into normal lighting conditions so you can see the kit a little bit better. But just for a do, I've also got this little uh, tabletop lamp. This is also media bias lighting uh, from the same company. So again, this is 6500 and with a very high CRI value, so it's very color accurate, but this is great. You can actually dim these, well, really bright, but you can actually dim them right down to about 2% and you've got this little hood on there so you can really guide where the light goes. So when you're, when you're grading, I can have just a little bit of ambient light just here where I might have my notes or something like that. So th these, these are really great. In fact, I wanna get a few more of these. I'd like to have a few more on the desk, they're, they're brilliant. So uh, I'm gonna switch the lights off, then we're gonna look at the, uh, all the kit that I use, we're gonna look at the furniture, we're gonna look at the YouTube setup, we're gonna look at the software, and all that stuff. So I'm gonna clear the blackout, so that's just on an electric blind thing that goes up and down, and I'm gonna switch these off so that we don't get the flicker from the back. I've also just remembered I've got a little t-shirt down here. This is actually, the back of the advanced panel is actually silver, which is really annoying because it reflects on the screen, so that's uh, a t-shirt to cover that. So my 25,000 pound panel has a two pound 99 t-shirt on the back of it to stop it <laughs> reflecting. <laughs> so first I'm gonna show you all the equipment that we've got to do the actual color grading itself. So obviously this starts with the uh, Apple Mac, so we've got a Mac Pro 2019. This is pretty decent spec. It's the Duo 32 gig Radeon Vega 
I think that's what it's called. Uh, it's the Duo one, so it's two times 32 gigs with 96 gigs of RAM, and I think it's got a one terabyte hard drive in there, I'm not really sure. And that is my main grading computer. I've got many computers here, but that's the main one I use. We do have a backup one as well, but that's the main one. That is connected to uh, Promise RAIDs. So I've got two of them there. I've got a third one in the back there as well. So these are just Thunderbolt 3 RAIDs that connect straight to the back of the Mac. And then we have a single connection coming, a Thunderbolt 3 connection coming out of the Mac into a breakout box. So that is all the way over here because it's on this really nice 19 inch rack mount. This is the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme. Now this connects to the Mac via Thunderbolt 3. Again, it's all Thunderbolt. The problem I've got with this one is that is literally about 20 centimeters longer than the longest Thunderbolt 3 cable you can buy. So I had to buy a fiber optic Thunderbolt cable just to run this. And that cable was about four, 500 pounds. The absolutely crazy money, but it's a fiber optic cable with Thunderbolt 3 connectors on the end. That is all running in the desk. So what's, what I love about this desk is it's all the trunking's built in. So you literally, you're not gonna see, well, you see a few cables, but hardly any cables. There's a, like a plethora of cables running through the back there. They're all nicely hidden away. This desk is AKA design. I've had this desk, this is one of the first bits of furniture I bought when I moved into this office. Um, it's an absolute solid bit of kit. 19 inch rep mount sides, beautiful desk to work on, really nice and big. And this is actually an audio console desk. So they, the AKA Design also do an edit desk, which uh, that's the one I've got downstairs. So I've got AKA Design furniture as, as everywhere I can put it. It's not cheap, but it's brilliant. It's really comfortable to sit at, it's got nice rounded edges, Just it, it just works. I mean, look at all the kit I've got in here and I still feel like I've got plenty of desk space. So I love that. I think it's called the Pro Wave. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description when I remember what it's actually called. So that's pretty much that setup. Then sitting on top here, I've got my main Apple display. It's a 27 inch Apple display. I don't really like it to be absolutely honest with you. It's quite shiny and reflective. Um, I just fell into the whole, let's buy an Apple monitor because it's going to look nice. But uh, it works, it does the job. I've only got a single GUI. I don't work with a dual display. Uh, obviously the Flanders we've already seen as my main Hero grading monitor. Uh, I've got the Panasonic GZ2000 on the wall for the client. And then here I've got a Dell 34 inch ultra wide and that is running Nob Omniscope. So it's running my scopes. So I don't use the DaVinci Resolve scopes. I've done a whole episode on why and why I use Omniscope. They're just as accurate, but I have loads more features on the Omniscope that I really like to use. So that's just running all the time. Um, I get pretty ribbed in the industry for having such a large monitor just for scopes. Uh, most people work on a tiny little, you know, just a really small little monitor, but I really like it. It's, so it's my suite. That's how big it's gonna be. So it's a 34 inch ultra wide. I'll probably will make it a little bit smaller one day when I get around to it. So that's that setup. Now that Nob Omniscope, I hope you're keeping up with this, is running off a HP Z workstation, which is down on the floor underneath me through there. So it's a dedicated separate computer. So it's not taking up any resources on my main Mac while I'm grading. So obviously I'm working with 4K a lot and I'm working with what we've got going on here, 18 nodes running on here with plugins and all sorts of stuff going on. So I want my machine to be running as fast as it can, and I want my scopes on a dedicated system. I've basically got a Blackmagic I.O. card in there, I think the intensity, and that again is fed from the 4K Extreme. So this is doing a big job here of delivering to my client monitor, my hero monitor, and it's taking a clean direct feed out via HDMI into my HP Z machine, which is being monitored directly on here. So we've got the Mac, we've got the storage, we've got the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme connecting to the monitors and connecting to the PC, which in turn is giving us the scopes. But what else we've got here is of course the advanced panel. This is my little baby. So I've had this about 10 years, never regretted buying this thing. They're not cheap, but this is an absolute workhorse. So this is making my grading day much smoother, much nicer to work on. So if I sit down here, 
and it's just nice and comfortable and I can grade really quickly because I've got one button press for most of the functions. I've done a video on the advanced panel, so it kind of speaks for itself. They're, they're a great bit of care. I love all the panels in Blackmagic, but obviously I have got this one. They didn't have the mini and the micro when I set this up, but I love, I love this. It just makes my day so comfortable. It's so easy to grade on and it just sort of complements the setup. So that is connected via USB straight into the Mac Pro. So plenty of kit on this side to show you. I've got my Wacom tablet. This is an Intios 3, so it's a really old one. I think this is actually about 15 years old. I've had this donkey's years. So it's the old style. I prefer the old style because you get the little touch strip thing on the side and it hasn't got as many buttons as the new ones. I've got some of the new ones downstairs, but I, I just like this one for my grading. And I use a pen for everything. I use a pen for emailing. I don't use a mouse at all, but there is now an issue with the Wacom set up with uh, DaVinci Resolve that you can't reset some of the parameters so it gets really annoying and it gets a little bit sticky with the node sometimes. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I will find out. There's a bit of chat in the forums about it but I'm going to find out what's going on with that. So I have to have a mouse nearby which is a bit annoying. Uh, but yeah, that's my Wacom. I've got the MX keys so I've done an episode on my preferred keyboard. But I love this. This actually controls the PC and it, I can control my phone, my iPad, and the Mac Pro as well. So you can literally switch it between, in fact, it's got three now, so I've got it set to my iPad, not my iPhone. So it's iPad, Mac, and PC, just by switching these switches here. It lights up automatically as you get your hands near it. So this is great when you're working in the dark, which is obviously where I am most of the time. So love that, it's a, uh, it's, how's this connected? It's Bluetooth, it's Bluetooth. Um, there's a little dongly thing that comes with it that goes into the PC, but I think the Mac just picks it up off Bluetooth. All right, so we've got the Stream Deck here. This is the 32 button version, so it's a Stream Deck XL. This is connected via USB, so I've got another USB little router thing here, which has got a few of my USB peripherals, the Wacom, the Stream Deck going to there, and then there's one USB out into the Mac Pro. And on here, on my front page of this is like pretty random stuff actually. I've got BBC Six Music, which I listen to all the time. I've got a little clock here so you can tell what time it is without it being obvious in front of your client. I've got uh, DaVinci Resolve settings in here so I can click on here and go into my colour page. And I've got some settings that I've set up in there on the colour page. So I've got my printer lights, I've got my playheads, things like that. Uh, I've also got just things like my email address. So if you have to type out a form, I can just press one button and my email address types up, little things like that. I've got my uh, Things 3, which is what I use for keeping notes and uh, ideas that I've got for YouTube episodes, that kind of thing. That's on there as well. I've got my Zoom and I've also got my OBS, so when I do my live streams, I can control all that from the Stream Deck. So that's a brilliant bit of kit, but it is configured for the color page and the edit page as well. Right, I've got this prehistoric sound desk. This is a Spirit Folio from Soundcraft. I don't know why I've still got this, but it's a massive sound desk and all I've got, obviously in the days when we were doing analog editing and that sort of thing, this was very useful. But now I just, it's just basically a volume control for my speakers, which are Genelec 8030As. These are fantastic speakers, absolutely amazing sound comes out of those, which is great when you haven't got a client here because I can basically whack the music up and enjoy really nice bass response and um, great sounding. Uh, audio quality coming out of there. But that is all powered from this prehistoric desk. This desk is actually so old, channels one and channel two actually say VHS on the sliders. So that's how old it is. Um, and it says Avid. So yeah, this, so that's ancient. But I should really get a, a little, nice little USB dial or something like that to make that easier. But that's my sound mixer. Obviously that is being fed from the Ultra Studio 4K into here so that all the output goes from the Mac via the Thunderbolt to the Ultra Studio 4K, uh, Ultra Studio 4K Extreme, back into here, XLR to Jack, and then out to the Genelec speakers. Uh, what else? I've got a USB hub thing over here connected all the time. This is Cal Digit. It's a decent one. It's, uh, I think it cost about £200. I've used cheap ones before. They're, they're rubbish. You get really rubbish speeds when you're putting... Th this is great for just putting uh, SD cards in and connecting up hard drives, so I've got, I've probably got several hundred of these 
lessee type things. And clients bring in a drive, plug it straight into there. I get a really nice high speed connection to the Mac. Again, I'm pretty much running out of connectors on the back of that Mac. So that's that. I've got my iPad running here so I can just have my emails and stuff on the side when I've got clients here. And I don't use it for much more than that. It's more sort of, it's kind of my office admin machine. And I think that's about it on here. Oh, and obviously got the media lights here that we spoke about earlier. So this is giving me uh, D65 lighting because you don't have to work in complete darkness to be a colorist. So moving on to the other side of the desk, I've got my speed editor. This just sits really nicely next to the advanced panel. I love my speed editor. This is a brilliant little bit of kit and that just sits there all day quite happily. So this is my Mac Pro 2013 trash can. This used to be our main system. This is now my backup system. I also use this for beta testing. So when version 18 was still in beta, I was running it on this system to do my checks before I committed to the main suite. I have literally just committed to the main suite, as you might have seen in an episode, and I'm very happy with it. I was desperate for the new features, so I have actually upgraded my main system before I normally would, but this is sitting here still because I haven't put it away yet, basically. <laughs> so it's sitting here. It's connected to my ASUS. This is the UCG model. So this one is uh, SDR, but also does HDR up to 1600 nits. So this is where I do a lot of my HDR testing and playing around with HDR settings and such. This can probably go back downstairs soon. So I, I like to keep my desk as clean as possible. So that covers every single bit of kit that I use for my actual color grading. So most days I try and get out of the studio around about midday, get some air, but I go down to the gym. So we're going to pop in and say hello to Jane, who owns the place. And to get there, we need to go down this street here. It's Kensington Gardens. This is my favorite street in Brighton. So let's go and take a wander. Welcome to Jolliffe's. Best coffee shop in Brighton, by a mile. This is Resident Records, this is where most of my money goes. This is the best record shop in the UK. Rocky, sit. Hello, mate. Hi, Dustin. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm <laughs> this is Jane, this is F45, where I come to work out every day. Every day? Pretty much every day. Uh, you're, you're consistent. <laughs> <laughs> Very kind. Um, so, this is a good opportunity for me to get out of the office. I work in a dark room, obviously, so it's actually nice to come out see some daylight and get out of my chair because obviously I'm sat down a lot so I've got a standard desk now but obviously doing a full workout is a really good way of breaking up my day so I pretty much come here every day it's a good social F45 Jane tell me about F45 uh, so Dust was part of our original crew. We opened in 2018. Um, we joined in March 2018. Just a quick little look there. So he's been with us for a long time. Uh, every single day we do something different. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What's your favourite cardio? <laughs> uh, I like mix it a bit. Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday is easier to wait. But so people come in on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They know that they're going to get a really, really solid workout. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays a little bit more strength-based training. So different energy systems, but all really important to continue to build um, lean muscle and a stay fit and strong. Um, exhibit A. So obviously I'm not working out at the minute because I've got two broken ribs. So, um, so I'm just putting on a few pounds. Yeah, no. I'll be back in about 10 weeks. And also the community bit. If you're on your own all day, it's lovely to come in and have a chat with people, to have a yeah, you know, exactly. bit of crap. Like how many friends have you made at F45 since you've been here? <laughs> <laughs> I actually no, we're a proper <laughs> So um, bear in mind that obviously with lockdown, all the gyms were closed for that yeah. uh, long period of time. So you were very dedicated because you were an online um, F45er as yeah. well. Um, so that was, that was quite funny. We had a, obviously the, for everybody, it was, it was a difficult time. And I think a lot of the time people associate working out for their, obviously how they look physically, but actually some of the biggest benefits are really how you feel and also what you do from the inside out. So your whole cardiovascular system, keeping yourself fit and healthy from the inside out. But the mental benefits, the endorphins, they're kind of the bits that I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never people... come and then walked out there going, I wish I hadn't come. No, exactly. You know? <laughs> well, you've completed 516 in studio really? classes. Yeah. Oh, so it's pretty impressive, actually. We need to get you a 500 club t shirt. 516 hours of my life. So. 500, well, 516 45 minute sets, but if you stay yeah. for the, the cool time, for the, crack. the chat <laughs> and the shower afterwards is probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good to see you. Nice to see you. We can't wait to see you back in the studio. I'll be back in <laughs> Thank you. <All> right. <laughs> Bye, dude. Bye. <laughs>
Okay, so let's have a look at what else makes this studio what it is. So I've got basically this little weird thing on my desk. Uh, I've had a few people saying, what's that thing on your desk when they've seen my desk setup? But basically it's a charger. So I've got my AirPods that I use when I'm walking to work. So I've got about a nice 10, 15 minute walk to work. Stick those on, stick them on charge when I come into the office. It means my phone is off the desk. It means I can casually keep an eye on it when I've got clients here, I'm in the grade, but it just keeps it all charged as well. So that's really great. And what else we've got going on here? Probably the chairs. Um, Herman Miller Aeron chairs. I've always used these. We've got them downstairs. These are not cheap, but this one, I reckon this is 20 years old and it's just really comfortable to work on. I've got it set. This one is set with it. It's got a tilt lock. So it's got three tilts on this one. Uh, so it's a kind of upgrade. And I have my tilt lock very forward so that I don't slouch. In fact, I think I've just taken it off. But it means that I'm, I work quite forwards and I just find it's better for me. I, I tend to slouch, otherwise I'll lean on my arms and that sort of thing. So it's really good for keeping my back good. And he says, I've actually got two broken ribs at the minute. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not very comfortable when you've got two broken ribs, but it's a really nice, I've got, it's adjustable arms, all that sort of stuff. I've got two of them up here. My clients sometimes want to sit up here. So I let them if they want to, I don't like it if they do, but some of my clients are really nice, so I let them in here. The ones that I don't like have to sit at the back. Uh, that's not true, I don't have any clients I don't like. So we've also got here a fridge. So this is a 19 inch rack mount fridge, keeping all my drinks nice and cold. There's beer in there, there's Cokes, there's water, there's whatever people want. In fact, there's also my lunch in there. I don't keep my lunch in there when the clients are here. I don't think it's that nice to have a look at my pasta in a Tupperware. But uh, that is there. I pretty much built the desk around that fridge. It's one of the first bits of kit I got. But my clients can just help themselves, cold drinks, all day long. So how this room is set up is I'm sat at the front and the client sits at the back. So we've got two seaters seti here, very nice and comfortable, and I don't know why I'm sitting on it. And another seti here, it's lovely and comfortable as well, lots of little cushions. They've got a table here so they can have their laptop going, but mainly when you're sat here you're looking directly at the client monitor. So I've got my Panasonic straight ahead of them and they can easily watch the grade going on from here. To be honest, they'll look at that for about 20 minutes and then they're here on their laptop and they're drinking coffees and stuff. So that's that set up. So over here on the shelf is plenty of refreshments. So we've got biscuits and uh, sweets, pastries, that sort of thing, uh, energy bars and a bowl of fruit. And I don't believe, I think one banana has been eaten. In a, I've been here about 15 years. I think one banana has been eaten. They go straight for the sweets every time and the biscuits. So uh, that's to keep them refreshed. Obviously we've got the drinks in the fridge over there. Uh, up here, we've got some scented stuff. So there's a smelly candle. So the room smells nice, Jace, wouldn't you yeah. agree? So this is Joe Malone, Myrrh and Tonka. It smells great. And so that keeping the room smell nice. I've got, oh, this is quite fun. I've got a couple of Adobe Premiere floppy disks here. These are the original floppy disk installation disk from version one of Adobe Premiere. To be honest, it's more reliable then than it is now. And then here I've got a stand-up sit-down electronic desk. This is by FlexiSpot. This is the E7 Pro and they're actually having a sale on at the minute. So if you're watching this sort of quite recently after I've made it, you can go onto their website and have a look. They have got a sale on at the moment. But this is really nice bit of kit. This is the uh, dark maple version with white legs. And what I like with this to start with is its lowest point is only 58 centimetres. So actually, it's really nice for my clients just to have stuff on the side. I can use it as a side table. And then I've got four memories on here, so I can really easily put it into a sitting position. So I'm just going to press the sitting button. Nice and quiet. Really smooth. And that's my sitting position. So obviously, I'd have one of my chairs sat here. And then when I want to work standing up, so what I like with this is when I'm working on ideas for YouTube or I'm just doing emailing, it's really nice to get off the chair, even though it's a nice comfy chair, come over here and just stand up. So I've got a preset position here. I'll just press this little standing icon. That raises up. And it really nicely, smoothly stops when it gets to the top. So it's, I, I love that. So, and then I'm here, I'm working. So I've only got a little light laptop on here. This pro one actually holds 125 kilos of weight, so I can have my Zeus monitor, which weighs a ton, and the MacBook Pro on here quite happily, which I have done, and it's just really nice. It's a really nice way to just, just stand up, get used to, you know, give your back a little rest, do your work. When I'm done, I just press memory one, and it goes right the way back down to its 58 centimeters. Super quiet. And there you go. So that's the FlexiSpot E7 Pro. 
So when I'm working at the stand-up desk, I'm actually working on a Windows machine. This is a Windows laptop. It's the Zeus ProArt Studio Book. This is a great machine, really powerful, really high-spec graphics in there. And if I load that up, the screen on here is an OLED display. HDR, 16 by 10, it's a really high quality screen. So this plays DaVinci Resolve beautifully. I do a lot of my editing, my YouTube work on here, and it's just a great machine to work with. So I would love it, really high spec, the Zeus ProArt Studio Book. Moving on to this side of the room, this is kind of the dull bit really. It's an IKEA Calyx shelf with some old magazines on it, which I should clear up really. Uh, there's a little mug here that actually someone from my YouTube channel sent me. I, I mentioned about a Tesla sponsorship once, wishing and they sent me a mug, which is very nice of them. Um, I've got some ARRI reference charts there. There's a couple of books. Uh, this book is amazing, The Art of Colour, Johannes Itten. I recommend this to all my students who want to learn about colour and colour theory. Nothing to do with digital colour, literally about colour. And I now have heard this book is about five or six hundred pounds. So uh, what I do recommend actually is this one. Excuse my back. Uh, Vision Art, The Biology of Seeing. This was a recommend by Walter Volpato. And this is, this is a really good book, but much more affordable. I think that's more like probably 50 pounds. So that's that. I keep on here a bit of my photography equipment for filming my YouTube channels. Uh, I've got Leatherman on there, some bits and pieces. My, my sunglasses, which I always wear when I go. I might as well mention these, see if they'll send me some free ones. It's Finlay London. I love your sunglasses, send me some if you want, I'd happily wear them, <laughs> so that's those. Uh, I always go outside with sunglasses on because when you're in here in the dark, it's really important to do that, to keep yourself healthy. Uh, there's always water on here in a bottle, so we're trying to be as green as possible and reduce plastic waste. And this is a great book as well, Gregory Cruzden, Beneath the Roses, amazing photographer, uh, just go and check it out. So that's that, there's a cupboard here, um, if I open this, it, everything's just going to fall out. I'm not going to open that, but that's full of hard drives, manuals, dongles, gaffer tape, oh, I've just put it, nail scissors, there's all sorts of stuff in there. <laughs> so, like, no, I'm definitely keeping that shut. There's flipping muesli in there, right. <laughs> um, so that's the dark cupboard. And that is about it, I think. Okay, so the YouTube setup. This is permanently set up in the corner of my room. Obviously, I put the camera and tripod away, but the lighting system stays set up even when I've got clients in here for a grade. It tucks very nicely out of the way, but this is too big to take up and down each time a client comes in. I've got the Aperture 120D Mark II lighting setup here and Light Dome SE. Uh, Aperture very kindly gave me that, so I was really grateful to them for that because it's made my YouTube videos look immensely better. The A7S III is what I'm recording on. I record everything in 4K. I've got the 35mm f1.8 Sony lens on there, so it's the prime lens. It's not the G Master, it's just the prime 1.8. And that connects via Bluetooth, I think, or Wi-Fi, from the camera to my phone. So I've got a bit of software on my phone, which allows me to control the camera. I can record from here, and I can see the setup. And I prefer that than having the viewfinder sticking out, because I find that when I'm talking to the camera, I talk to the viewfinder. So I prefer to have it just down here, and then I can control it all from my phone. Audio-wise, I've got a Sennheiser 416. I absolutely love this mic. They're not cheap, but I absolutely love it. And I don't hardly do any treatment on my audio at all, if anything. That's going to a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. So this allows me to take the XLR connection from the mic, give it some phantom power, that's fed via USB to my Mac. I can put the mic out of the way if I need to when clients are here. So that's kind of the setup. I've got an ATEM Mini Pro at the back that I use for my live streams, so my camera plugs straight into that. And that's it. So the only other thing I do, let's switch the light on so I can control the light from here. So I'm running it at about half power. And then I've got a little blue light that I kick up at the back. So me... right, and that's a little blue light, and that is made by... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Viltrox RB10. So it just sits there at the back of the settee. It just gives a little bit of light up there. And then, obviously, I drop the blackout blinds down. I put this little uh, practical light on as well. Stick that on. Like that. 
Uh, that is pretty much the YouTube setup. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got a tripod here. This is a new uh, N284. It's uh, pretty cheap and cheerful, but it does the job. Uh, it means I can bring the camera closer to me and it's really easy to adjust, so I like that. And that's about it. So all I have to do then is close the blinds. So we're going to blackout. Make sure the mic's on. Start recording lovely YouTube episodes for you all. So that'll come down in a minute. And on the walls, I've got four sound panels. So these just help deaden the sound a little bit in here, so my voice just sounds a little bit better for YouTube. So there's two in front of me, and there's two behind me on the back wall. So there you have it. That's my nice, simple YouTube setup. So let's take a look at some of the software that I'm using. Obviously, I'm on DaVinci Resolve. Both these systems are on version 18 now, so I've come off the beta, we're on full version 18, and both of these are running the full studio version. All those extra effects and features that you get for a few hundred pounds, it's an absolute no-brainer. So both systems are on studio. And I've also got some third-party plugins. Now, some of these I've got discount codes for you as well, so if you're looking to buy some third-party plugins, check the links in the description, because I can get you 10 and 15% off some of them. But let's have a look at the ones that I'm using. So if I scroll down here, these are all my resolve effects. And the first ones we come to is film emulation. So the first one here, Dehancer Pro. I love Dehancer. I'm using it on pretty much every program that I'm grading at the minute. It's a film emulation plugin and really high quality. I tend to use it for halation and a little bit of bloom sometimes. And I just love it. It's, it works really well. It makes all my stuff look really great. And below that, I've got Film Convert. Now I'm using this for when I get awkward shots to grade like GoPro and drone footage. I find some of the settings in here work really well on that stuff. Below that we've got Sapphire. So I've got Sapphire and Boris, the full suite. There are literally hundreds of effects in here. I'm definitely not going to go through all these that I use, but their, their glows, their lens flares, that sort of stuff are great. Also their fixing tools, so things like D-Flicker and that kind of thing. Um, if you've got field problems, this is great. We do a lot of documentaries where we're working with archive footage and you can get some really great results out of this. So that's the Sapphire plugins and also the Boris plugins, very similar, but they come as a suite. So scrolling down further from that, God, there are literally hundreds of these. Right, you don't need much more than those, I'll tell you. Right, Open Effects Z Cam. So Z Cam was um, a camera that we, I used on a grade, so a, a grade came here from Z Cam, and that is their plugin that is free to download, and it's basically the color space transform to get you in a good working space with Z Cam footage. Monitor it, I've got no Omniscope installed in here. This is because you don't have to have a dedicated machine to run no Omniscope. You can just run it with inside Resolve. So if you're working on a laptop, for example, you can use no Omniscope within your system. I tend to find it works a lot better on a dedicated system, which is, as you've seen, I'm doing that already. But this is just installed because I did a dedicated YouTube episode about how to use it. Uh, Color Lab, so I've got the Look Designer. So this is, again, their film emulation. Fantastic tool. Color Lab now do lots of other options as well, so they do a lot with AI. So they're doing um, scene matching and color matching, and they are pretty cool tools. So check out their website as well. So it's colorlab.ai. And that's kind of what I've got in the color page. So moving on to the edit page. Now, obviously, a lot of those, you'll find them in the edit page as well. So they're all down here. So there's a Boris effects and Nob and Cinematch, Film Convert, all those things. But one that I'm using is by a company called Motion VFX. I love these. These are dedicated DaVinci Resolve plugins that create titles and effects, and they have LUTs, and they have backgrounds, and they have little symbols for YouTube tutorials, and they're fantastic. I have got a discount code for those as well in the description, but I'm really using these all the time. I'm using them not only for YouTube, but I'm actually using them on my productions. So down here, we've got Motion Effects in the Titles plugins, and this one is, these are intros, this one is cinematic style titles. So you can see that they're really great, honestly. These uh, YouTubers, tutorial ones, so these are really good for my YouTubes. And I'm using them on productions as well, so not just on YouTube stuff. So they're worth checking out. They're, they're coming up with new ones all the time as well. So other bits of software I'm using outside of the Resolve scope, I'm using this thing here that I'm using to point and make things large is called Mouse Pro. Uh, I can't remember how much it is, it's not much, it's a few pounds. And I think that only works on Mac, but that's a really good one for, again, for tutorials and YouTubes. I've got a thing on here called Things 3. So this is my organizer, if you like. So this syncs with my calendar, but it's a, basically a really uh, efficient to-do list. So we can see on there today, I've got my filming my studio tour, which is obviously what I'm doing now. 
I've also got in here one for YouTube. So this is for my YouTube ideas for future episodes. Uh, I've also got a pad and pen that I do that with, but I transcribe it all into Things 3. And this syncs really nicely with my iPad and my iPhone. So I've, I've got access to this wherever I go. I'm using Camtasia for my screen records. I'm using OBS for my lives. And that's about it. I always like to do an unboxing. There we go. So we've got the eight terabyte Cloud Store Mini. So I'm very excited about that. So I look forward to plugging that in and giving you a full review of that. So new addition to this week. I hope this studio tour has been useful for you. Um, I've pretty much shown you everything. I've even shown you the muesli in the cupboard. So look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. Dog, Baxter, come on. Come on. Baxter, come on, come on. Okay, he's super keen to get out. Baxter. Come so over here, I keep a load of refreshments for the people, for the people, for the people. <laughs> Why can't it be simple? Right, let's nail this. Hi Lucy. You on FaceTime? Hi, you all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just filming again. I'm just filming me doing my studio tour. And here, we've got the FlexiSpot E7 Pro Sit up, stand up. <laughs> Sit up, stand up. No, it's not. This is the Asus UCG. I can't remember all the little letters before it. PCXR3 or something. Fuck, <laughs> I'm going to start again. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Mer and Tuscany. So everything else is kind of stuff. So, um,. That's about the worst sign-off I could possibly ever do, isn't it? <laughs> 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 and I'll just fade off into infinity. No.